My plan is to end this sermon series next Sunday, and then we're going to have a new sermon series called Be Attitudes. How many of you think we need to be attitudes? Amen? We'll be preaching out of Matthew chapter 5 and the Be Attitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, for several weeks. But I want to finish this strong. So today, I want us to read the entire text that we've been reading all eight, now nine weeks, so that you will get a gist of what Paul was speaking to you this morning. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. If you're there, say amen. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this, and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. If you believe it, say amen today. Fist bump that person next to you as you're sitting down and tell them to put it on. All right. Our focus today is on verse number 17. We talked about it. Two weeks ago, last week was Christmas Eve, so it was two weeks ago we talked about the helmet of salvation. Now we're going to focus on the latter part of verse number 17, the sword of the Spirit. How many of you have your swords with you this morning? Amen? The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. In all the weapons that we mentioned here and we read, verse 10 through 18, this is the only weapon that is used on the offense. How many of you know the difference in offense and defense? In a defensive position, it's when the devil comes against you. You're building the, you're wearing all the, all the stuff, right? And then you've got the shield of faith to block it off. But here we find Paul finally giving us something we can fight the devil with. And you know what? There's people say all the time uh, that, that they want to fight the devil. You better be careful what you ask for because he's a, he's a sly old fox, isn't he? If you could catch him, we'd put him in a box. Remember that old song we used to sing and lock the box and throw away the key for all those tricks he's played on me, right? So we think about it. It's the only one, the sword of the Spirit. Notice it doesn't say sword of the flesh. It doesn't say sword of revenge. It says the sword of the Spirit. What is the sword? It says it right here in the the end of that verse. What is the sword of the Spirit? It is the Word of God. This is the offensive weapon that the Lord gives us to use against the devil. We're not using guns and machetes and all these different things, but this right here, this is the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, which will give us victory over the devil today. Amen. The Greek word for sword here is macharin. It doesn't mean the big long sword. Like some of you know, have a sword that would go Highlander. Duncan McLeod from the Clan McLeod. Some of you know who that is. Some of you don't. He had a, two people laugh. So I know two people know who Duncan McLeod was. He carried a big sword, a big long sword. It wasn't a spear. That was a long spear. But the word, this word machete means a short sword or a dagger. It's not 
when you want somebody far away from you. But it's when the devil comes against you so strong that he's got you right in his grasp. And you're close enough to him that you can take that sword and you can jam him and you can defeat him. And there's some of you that the devil was away for a while, but all hell was broke loose against your life. And the devil is not in another room. The devil's right in front of you. And he's saying here, take on the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. That word right there means a dagger that you may be able to do what God would have you to do today. Amen. Now, I want to teach you something for a few minutes today. If you're taking notes, there'll be some great notes to take here. If you don't have the church app, you need to download it. All these notes are on the app today. And there's some great things that you can learn and you can talk about when it talks about the Word of God. In the New Testament, there are three different times that the Word of God is mentioned. It's mentioned by three Greek words that I want to break down and talk to you about today. The first word is the word graphi. Everybody say graphi. It comes from the word graffiti. We know what graffiti is. Graphi, the graphi word of God, is the written word of God. It is what is put on paper. That's literally what it means. The writings, the ink on the paper. There are 66 books in this Bible. There are 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament. Over 1,500 years it took to write the Word of God. There are 31,102 verses in this Word of God that you can learn and you can understand today. And the written Word of God is called graphi. All right? So does everybody understand what that is? Now, to make sure you understand, there is no graphi word of God still being written. If someone comes to you and says, so-and-so wrote another Bible, and, and there have, are other religions, people like Joseph Smith that says he has a, has a word of God and came up with his own Bible, they call it the Church of the Latter-day Saints, there is no other graphi word of God being written. Everything you need in your life is right here in this 66 books of God. No one can add to it and no one can take away. Amen. So never, ever, ever let somebody tell you if they say, I've got a word from God. Well, that's a little bit different. But it's not a written word if it's not in these 66 books. We got that? So we understand, number one, the graphite. Number two, the second type of word of God that's mentioned in the New Testament is logos. Everybody say logos. Logos means the message. Logos, to, to get a Logos word from God, means that you have a comprehension of what has been written down. It is the understanding. It, it comes from the word logic, right? So when you logic, logic things in your mind, the Logos word of God, when you read it, it starts to make sense. How many of you know the Logos word of God can't make sense to you if you don't ever read it? Hey, Amen. But the Logos Word of God makes sense when you read things like John chapter 1, verse number 1, that says, in the beginning was the Word, the Logos, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by Him, and without Him was nothing created that was upon the earth. And verse number 14 says, and the Word, the Logos, was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Logos is the understanding. Have any of you ever just been reading the Word of God and it just pops out to you? Something just makes sense to you. It's when you take the graphi Word of God and you begin to receive the Logos Word of God and you understand something that you may have never understood today. And here, by the way, the graphite Word of God is never going to be added to. The Logos Word of God needs to be expanded in your life every day you live. The Bible teaches us what? 
to hide its words in our heart that we might not sin against God. How many of you thank the Lord for the Logos Word of God? Now, the third one that I want to teach you about today is the actual word that Paul is referring to here in the text. When he said, take on the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, it's this Greek word that he meant that's used in the Bible. It's a word by the name rhema. Everybody say rhema. Man, I don't know about it, but it's just something about the word rhema that just makes my spirit begin to grow. What does the word rhema mean? It is the spoken word of God. Woo! I don't know why that don't make you preach and uh, make you want to shout this morning when you think about it. The graphi is to read. The logos is to understand. But the rhema word of God is what we as Christians should be speaking the word of God out of our mouth so that we can get against the devil and all the wiles that he comes against us. Let me tell you something. This Bible, you can own a thousand copies of it. But if you don't read it and you don't have a rhema word from God, it's no different than any other book. It's no different than reading Harry Potter. It's no different reading The Hunger Games. It's no different than reading everything else. Until you receive the rhema word from God, the power of God, the spoken word of God, I'm telling you, this will transform your life. It'll make an alcoholic free. It'll make a drug addict clean. It'll make a fornicator faithful. It will change your life from the inside out. God, give us a rhema word from you today. Lord, we don't want to just read the word. We don't want to just see the word. But God, help us to be a doer of the word. Amen. 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 The grapha. The grapha must become logos. Logos to speak the rhema in your life. Here's what quickly things I want to give you. Five quick things today. Man, I tell you, I feel the Holy Spirit in this place. To become rhema, you must logos. That means you must understand. Number one, it is inspired. This word of God is inspired. It is inspired by the Holy Ghost. It is the most powerful book in the world. It's number one on the bestseller for 67 consecutive years because of the graphi that's written down. And there's many Christians that only understand it as graphi. There's some of you that read it as the logos. But there's some of you when the Holy Spirit digs deep inside your spirit, He gives you a rhema, Word of God. Amen. And that's what He was talking about here in this. It is inspired. Here's what 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16 said. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Remember righteousness? We talked about the breastplate of righteousness, the rhema, Word of God. It is inspired of God. Not only that, it is sharp. It's not a dull sword. It's not a sword that's for sissies. You, ever, you know, you think of those noodles that we get in the... Man, those noodles can hold 270-pound men, right? You get those in the pool, man, I can stay above water. But how many of you know if you tried to use a noodle, if you tried just to use the graphite, if you just tried to refer to it, there's nothing that you can do. But the Word of God, the rhema of God, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, for the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of the joints and the marrow and the discerner of the thoughts and the intention of the heart. There's nothing that will penetrate the darkness of this world any better than the rhema word of God. Hallelujah. Number three, it is proven. It is proven. The Bible in Psalm chapter 18, verse number 30. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trust in Him. 
You're not just reading something by happenstance. You're not just reading a fairy tale. You're reading something that can help you change your life forever. It number four, it gives power. Luke chapter 10, verse number 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means harm you. What is that that can give you strength? What is that power? It is the rhema word of God that comes from God today. And the fifth thing that the rhema word is to understand today It is the authority. I speak to you today not as a man that is perfect, not as a man that has lived a sinless life, not of a man that deserves to be here, because if I had what I deserved, I would have been in hell a long time ago. But I stand before you under the authority given to me by the rhema word of God. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 18, he said, Surely I say unto you that whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven I speak to you through the authority of God this morning and tell you I need a rhema word of God I just don't want to see the graphite I don't want to just understand the logos but I want the rhema of God in my life amen when Jesus gives us the best example of the rhema word of God In Matthew chapter 4, if you want to mark that in your Bible. Matthew chapter 4, you know the story. Jesus is led into the wilderness. Did you understand that? He was led. He was led into the dry place. He was not led there by the devil. He was led there by God. There are some times that God allows you to be in the wilderness. Not because He doesn't love you, friend, but because He wants you to take the graphite Word of God, turn it into the Logos Word of God, and get a rhema Word of God to help you get through the wilderness that you're fighting in your life today. There are some of you that feel isolated. You feel set apart. You feel like you're on an island all by yourself. Honey, you may be right where God wants you today so that He could deposit a rhema Word in your life. Amen. So He's led into the wilderness. He fasts, Betty, for 40 days. He doesn't drink anything or eat anything for 40 days. He prays. He spends time with the Heavenly Father. He comes out of the wilderness and there waiting on Him is Satan himself. Satan begins to come to Him and he tempts Him. He tries to tempt Jesus Christ. Do you really understand that? You think it's bad enough when He tries to tempt you. Imagine Him dumb enough to try to tempt Jesus. What could Jesus have done? Jesus could have called 10,000 angels. Jesus could have spoke something to the Heavenly Father and said, Heavenly Father, send down Gabriel. Send down Michael. Send down the warring angels and take care of these things. But what Jesus decided to do is I'm going to give an example to Restoration Ministries 2,000 years later and I'm going to teach them to stand against the temptation of the devil. I'm going to teach them to use the rhema word of God which will help them get through any situation honey hey you need to quit telling God how bad your problem is and start telling your problem how big your God is Woo! praise the Lord this morning hallelujah Matthew chapter 4 here we go verse number 3 now when the tempter came to him he said if you are the son of God command that these stones be made into bread. Jesus hadn't eaten 40 days. He was hungry. Some of y'all are hungry now, and you ain't ate since a taco last night, right? Hey, man, imagine being 40 days without food. The devil comes to him and says, why don't you just take this stone, and why don't you just turn it into bread? And here Jesus had to make a choice, and Jesus answered him in verse number 4 of chapter 4. But he answered and said, It is written. What does it mean when he says it 
is written. He means it is the Logos Word of God. And I'm getting ready to give you, Satan, a rhema word from God. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. He didn't fight the devil with a wig, oh, karate kick. You know, I know karate. I can teach you all some special moves that I've learned through the years. And he didn't even use a dagger. He, did, You know, Peter, he picked up a sword and cut somebody's ear off. Jesus said, hey, we're not fighting that kind of war. Picks the ear up, slaps it back on the soldier, heals him right there and goes and dies on the cross. But Jesus gave him the rhema word of God and said, it, we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. He said, devil, you can speak what you want to, but as for me and my house, we're going to stand upon the Logos word of God. And when the devil comes against you, when you've got to begin to speak what Jesus speaks, you say, where did Jesus get that from? Well, let me tell you, Jesus took the graphite, he presented the logos, and spoke the rhema. He took that from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8. Jesus knew what Moses had written. He took the logos word of God and turned it into rhema. In Deuteronomy 8 and 3, so he humbled you along, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not eat, know or did your fathers not know, that he might make you known unto man that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Jesus fought the devil with the sword of the Spirit, the rhema word of God. So there's round one. Chow! He puts the devil right in his place. Now comes round two. The devil begins to keep speaking. How many of you know the devil ain't going to give up? He's going to fight you harder than you've ever been. Some of you say the devil's fighting me so hard. Hey, that's because he knows what, what, he knows what potential you have in God. And he knows the calling of God on your life. And he knows what you can do when you get a rainbow word from God. Amen. So let the devil fight all he wants to fight. We're going to fight him with the rainbow word of God, the sword of the Spirit. Matthew 4 and 5. Then the devil took him into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. Man, he sets him in the highest part there of the pinnacle. And he says to him in verse number 6, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He shall give His angels charge over you. And in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Here Jesus is presented a temptation of the devil. He reaches into the graphi word of God. He gets the logos word of God again from the book of Deuteronomy. And he presents a rhema word of God to the devil. What did he say to him? He quoted him Deuteronomy chapter 6 uh, verse number 16, ye shall not tempt the Lord your God as ye tempted him in Manasseh. He said, you can tempt me all you want to. You can make me think I can kill myself. You can make me think that suicide's the only answer. You can make me think that I'm better off dead than I'm alive. Hey, who am I talking to tonight? The devil's tempted many of you with that same lie from hell. But you need to give him a rhyme, a word of God, and said, I my my body's a temple of the Holy Ghost, and I belong to God. Amen. Again, he took the graphite, presented the logos, and presented the rhema. Then we come to round three, the last round here. He said, verse number eight of chapter four, again, the devil took him to an exceedingly high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. me. The devil wants you to think if you'll serve him, he'll give you everything. He wants to make you think if you'll deal those drugs, then you'll make more money than you can working an honest job. He'll make you think if you sold out to the devil, 
that you'll be more better off than you are trying to live for the Lord. Again, Jesus finds himself looking into the graphite word of God, speaking and finding the logos word of God, and presenting a rhema word of God to the devil. And he goes from Deuteronomy chapter 32. God had instructed Moses to climb Mount Nebo and show him Jericho and Canaan and the promises that came to Israelite. And when they came back to them, they said to him, we are but grasshoppers in the sight of these people and there's no way that we could take it. But there was two people by the name of Joshua and Caleb who had the rhema word of God. And they said, you know what? They may be big and their grapes may weigh hundreds and hundreds of pounds but I believe that he that is with us is greater than he that is within the world and Jesus took the rhema word of God and said to him in verse number 10 away from you Satan for it is written ye shall worship the Lord your God and him alone only will you serve you can't serve the devil and serve God there's some of you to receive a a rhema word of God today you've got to give up some things and quit letting this Bible just be great Take the logos and become rhema that you need from God today. Amen. Did you learn anything new today? <clears throat> Let me give you one more example. In closing, you say, preacher, it's afternoon. It ain't my fault. Y'all was up here worshiping God and praying in the altar. You going to blame me because we ain't going to be the first one to David's steakhouse today? Y'all crazy people, it's your fault, not mine. I'm going to get my time one way or another. Amen? Because I need a rhema word from God today. I can't live like this anymore. It's going to be a year of fruitfulness through the powerful rhema word of God. Woo! Amen. Amen. In Luke chapter 10... Jesus sends out 72. Can I say one more thing quickly before I go there? How many of you have a debit card? Hey, man, I love trying to explain to Connor and Michaela Papa's debit card. See, they just think, whatever I want, where's your debit card? Now they're getting a little older. I'll be somewhere looking And my debit card's not in my billfold anymore because somebody took it out, forgot to put it back. They just think there's an unended supply in there. How many of you know the well runs dry every once in a while? So I remember explaining to them, Honey, Connor, I have to take money and I have to put it on that debit card. And when I put money on that debit card then when I use it, it takes it out of what I've deposited. And the only way that it works is I've got to have it in there in order for it to come out of there. I don't know why that don't make some of you shout this morning. There are some of you this morning that need to take the graphite word of God and quit making it just another book. Understand the Logos Word of God and deposit the Rhema Word of God into your bank account. That way when the devil comes at you with the wiles of the devil and the fiery darts, you'll be able to present to him the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hey, if somebody will take that deposit today, your life will be changed forever. Amen? If it ain't in there... It can't come out. And the reason that some of you fall into temptation so weak is you ain't deposited. You ain't deposited the Logos Word of God in your life. It's just grapha. There's some of you, your grapha word got six, six inches of dust on top of it. There's some of you, it's in the back of your truck with three Doritos and two open packs of ketchup and seven French fries from 2023. Right? Some of you don't even know where your Bible is today. It's because it's nothing but graphite to you. But when you will make this thing logos, and you deposit it, you'll give the rhema to the devil when he, when he comes against you. 
Now we'll talk about Jesus sending out the 72 in closing. I don't mean a thing, by the way, when I say that. Jesus sends out 72. He says to them, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves. In Luke chapter 10. He says, carry no money. Greet no one on the road. You can read this in Luke chapter 10. Do not go house to house. When you go somewhere, stay there. Oh, my. What's he talking about there? He's talking about church hoppers. Wow, it got a little bit quiet in here this morning. How many of you know you need to find a good place you're getting the Logos Word of God that it's more than just graphite so that you can have rhema in your life? Jesus was saying here, don't be a church hopper. Don't be a house hopper. Don't go from house to house. When you get somewhere you need to be, stay there. You can read it here in Luke chapter 10. And then here's what he said. If they don't accept you, shake the dust off your shoes and go on to the next house. They're not going to live right and do right. Don't let them get you down. Russell, just go on somewhere else where God can use you. He sends out 72 because he's a God of order. He had 12 disciples. He had three of those, which were his inner circle, Peter, James, and John. He took them places. He didn't take the rest of them. Those were his inner circle. He had his 12. Then at those times, he sent them out two by two. And here he sends out 72. And he gives them those instructions. Don't talk to people on the road. Stay where you go. Don't carry any money with you. I'm warning you, I'm sending you out as a sheep in the midst of a bunch of wolves. And when they returned in Luke chapter 10, verse number 17, then the 70 returned with joy. I said 72, I meant 70. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the Demons are subject to us in your name. Those 70 went out. It's lambs amongst the wolves. They went out with no sword, with no gun, with no machine gun, with no bazooka. The only thing they were out with was the word of God. And they realized that when they spoke the rhema word of God, that the demons trembled. And he said to them in verse 18, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. And then he gave him a, he gave those 70 a rhema word from God that I want to leave with you today. He said in verse number 19, Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy and nothing. I said, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You want to know what that is? That's a rhema word from God for you today. The authority is the rhema word from God. It's the only offense that we can. And that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. When the devil tells you you can't, he'll say, nothing that God shall do is impossible. When he tells you you're all alone and you're never going to make it, he said he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. There's some of you that need to quit trying to fight this spiritual warfare with your manipulative tools that you learn from people who hurt you and you learn from people that were ungodly and you learn from people that fought very unfair. You need to take 
the graphite Word of God. And as you read it, it becomes Logos. And you understand it. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. That becomes rain of image in our life. That when you feel like you don't have anything, you can go to Philippians 4.13. But my God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And when I'm lonely, from the graphite to the logos to the rhema, Matthew 28, 20, Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Stop fighting a battle that's already won. Now you know why I wanted you to sing that today. I never tell these dudes and cats what to sing. They all know that. Every once in a while when God gives me something, I give it to them. Mama even asked me, I don't tell Mama what to sing. I would, how many of you how many like to have that as your mama? I'm telling you. I got to live right. When I was a teenager, ain't nothing got past that woman. Don't it? I'd be like, Mom, I'm, I'm sick, man. I'm sick to my stomach. She dragged me by the ear. Come on, elders. Let's anoint him with oil that the Lord will heal him. I'm like, Mom, I want to stay home and watch cartoons. No. No. Because she understood the rhema word of God. She understood James chapter 5 that said, If there are any sick among you, let them call upon the elders of the church and let them anoint them with oil, and their prayer and their faith shall make them free and heal their bodies. I'm encouraging you this year to memorize Scripture greater than ever before. I've given a challenge to our young people of a hundred verses. Those hundred verses are the rhema word of God that you will use against the devil when he fights you. I'm challenging you adults to memorize scripture. Put them on a posty note if you have to. Put them on your refrigerator. Put them on your mirror in your bathroom so when you're brushing your teeth you can read that scripture and memorize it. How do you memorize scripture? One at a time. Hide it in your heart. Let the graphite become logos and become rhema word to you. I told you, Rob, I had a word for you today because Rob wants to memorize the word of God. 31,000 verses, 31,102 verses. You ain't going to do it overnight. You're going to do it one at a time. How many of you need a rhema word of God in your life today? How many of you understand that the battle you're going through in your life, you don't fight your battle like this. I'm going to respond to that. I'm going to make it in all caps. That means you're yelling, right? Hey, did you see what I posted? I just let the world know I'm an idiot. I ain't got enough sense to come in out of the rain. This can be a tool of Satan or a tool used to change the world. Your rhema word of God is not going to have come from TikTok and the reels that you have, that you look through. Inspire me, inspire me, inspire me. It'll do good for a while. But until you hide that word in your heart, it'll never take hold. I'm, we're, 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 we're narrowing down this series. We've got one more week. We're going to wrap it up next week. And I hope you've learned something. I hope that you've thought and you've comprehended and you understood the battle that you're in today. If you'll read the graphite word and you accept the logos and we start getting over here to the book of Revelation, guess what? We win. 
we win. He that endures to the end shall be saved. Please, will you stand with me all over the building today? Bow your head, close your eyes, please. No one moving around just for a moment. What's God speaking to you this morning? Let's take a moment and think of that. Holy Spirit, I thank you for the graphite word that was written by these authors, the inspired, powerful, authoritative word of God that is proven. God, we have presented the Logos word of God today to your people. And Lord, I pray that the spoken rhema word of God will come alive in our spirit. Holy Spirit, would you stir up the gifts in these men and women around this room today? Would you let the Holy Spirit be stirred and the gifts of the Spirit be raised up inside us as we begin to pray in the Spirit, as we begin to move in the Spirit? Would there be conviction in the hearts of those that need salvation today? Lord, there's people in here, there's people in here that need to get saved. There's people in here that need to rededicate their life to the Lord today. Lord, let them take the rhema word of God and let it be alive in them. Lord, we're at the last service of the year. This is it. Lord, would these altars be filled today with people as we pray the old year out and the new year in. Lord, would this be a year that the rhema power of the word would be alive in us more than it ever has. And we will withstand against the fire and darts of the evil. In Jesus' name we pray. As they begin to sing, these altars are open. It's your last opportunity of the year to pray.